Time for one more countdown before the year is over for good. I'm John Ratham on my 10 most disappointing movies of 2021 list. No honorable mentions. You're just going to get all 10 at once. Reminds me of a few ladies I knew in college. Reminds me of a few other ladies I worked with at a movie theater. Also reminds me of a few more ladies that I worked with at a retail establishment for a big chain that I won't name here. But anyway, moving hastily on from those mental images, this list is compiled of various movies that I reviewed throughout the year among the 78 movies that I reviewed. Yes, way down from the 138 that I reviewed in the dreaded 2020. But I wasn't able to get to nearly as many movies as I would have liked. But sometimes it's quality over quantity. And I did see some really good stuff. I praise that stuff on my favorite horror movies year list and also my favorite movies list in general. This some of these movies aren't necessarily bad, but they just didn't meet my expectations. No, I'm not referring to steak or ribeye or, you know, pork shoulder or whatever, or ham. Can somebody offer me some ham? If you get that reference, I fucking love you guys. This is just basically either I thought these movies are going to be really good or really entertaining, and sometimes they were, but they just didn't meet whatever expectations I had. And it's not like I had 10 million reasons as to why I thought these movies didn't meet my expectations. If myself or anybody has 10 million reasons why a movie did not meet their expectations or lofty or otherwise, probably need to reevaluate our goddamn lives. At the end of the day, they're just movies. Now, some of these I didn't like. <clears throat> Ultimately, some of these I thought were okay. But let's crack on with the list. And I want to know some of your most disappointing movies of 2021. I also had some movies that I was very, very surprised by that I praised in my horror movies list and my uh, favorite movies list. And you can check out those videos. I thought of doing, you know, 10 most surprising movies. But, eh, I figured let's just talk about some stuff that really just didn't ultimately, you know, reach what I felt, you know, I didn't reach their potential. So number 10, Godzilla vs. Kong. It's a good thing this is available on HBO Max. Now, granted, Warner Brothers is not going to be doing the, you know, theater HBO Max, uh, you know, deal. It's not going to do the package deal, at least not next year. Now, it might in 2023 as theaters, to me, start to go away. Because I really don't think theaters are going to be around that much longer, pandemic or no pandemic. <laughs> Godzilla vs. Kong, after the 2014 Godzilla movie that wasn't, Great. Kong Skull Island that definitely had its moments and was pretty good, definitely better than that 2014 Godzilla movie, which had its moments but focused too much on the human characters. Uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters is pretty good. And other stuff. They've, they've, they've tried to revive the Godzilla King Kong franchises. And for the most part, they've done pretty well. This is a big goddamn deal. These two titans that have been around for so many goddamn years. King Kong since the 30s, Godzilla since the 50s. And it was a big goddamn deal. They'd done this movie before, Godzilla vs. Kong, I think it was back in 61, 62. And so with new technology and all this lavish, you know, all this lavish, you know, budgetry and all this and the graphics and whatever, this is going to be really good. And at times they did some good stuff as far as, you know, clashing. And then it more became uh, Godzilla and Kong as a buddy cop drama. <clears throat> and... Yeah, they hinted at a possible sequel, or maybe it was just finality because they realized they didn't have that much goddamn material and had to have them team up because they realized they couldn't deliver on the Godzilla vs. Kong thing. It just ultimately, when it was good, it was really good. There were some pretty good fights, but ultimately it just felt kind of empty. And it just kind of got to the point where it's like a lot of it just was... When they focus on the human characters, I didn't necessarily care. Not that the actors were bad. Not that the cast was bad. This is about Godzilla versus Kong. You need to have more Godzilla versus Kong, goddammit. And it didn't have enough. It just ultimately kind of eh. So now we move on to number nine. Candyman. Not the Christina Aguilera song, but the sequel to the 1992 Tony Todd starring movie with Virginia Madsen, who I would have wrecked back then and still would now. Moving on from that. She's beautiful. That's what I'm trying to say. This was a this was basically a direct sequel with a little bit of reference to Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. And it wasn't very good, especially when you figured out right from the outset where this whole thing was going. <clears throat> and the villain was stupid and a lot of stuff and I talked about this on you know and ra ranted heavily about in my review. And it's not even the wokeness or any of that stuff or whatever about police brutality or brutality and racism leading to the death of Candyman and the creation of Candyman. Obviously, that stuff was prevalent in 92 and is even more prevalent now. It just was a bad horror movie. It wasn't scary, and it was just a retread and a bad retread of the 1992 movie and hinted at a possible sequel, which we don't fucking want because even with the star power and the guy playing Candyman, 
or the guy ultimately, you know, playing the conflicted one that may or may not become Candyman, that is, um, was, you know, it's been out a few months, but maybe I shouldn't spoil that much, even though you probably can figure with a movie called Candyman what was going to happen. He's a pretty good actor. Just the problem is the rest of the movie wasn't good. <clears throat> now we move on to number eight. Fear Street Part 3, 1666 slash 1994, where everybody got on the floor and did the goddamn dinosaur. So, I I did, you know, lengthy reviews of all three of these Netflix originals. And to me, I thought the second one was the best. It kind of peaked there. Nine, this one had moments, but then was just bouncing around too much and it was obvious who the villain was. And to me, it just kind of felt sloppy by the end. <clears throat> And it didn't ultimately click. And it didn't finish off the series great. Now, at least it finished it off with some finality. With a little bit of a hint at a sequel. They may come back, you know, with more Fear Street stuff. Please stay away from the Sarah Fear stuff. Because it just reminds me of the Cheerleader Saga. And if you've read those books, yeah. How up and down those were. Ultimately, while not bad, it wasn't great. Now we move on to number seven, Army of the Dead. Okay, I've done this one to death. Zack Snyder's slow-mo musical. Huge budget. Dave Batista, Beautiful Women. And a lot of zombies, and also, yeah, a lot of slow-mo. A lot of fucking slow-mo, and not that I had high expectations for this anyway, but I'm looking, I go, boy, they put a lot of budget into this. They put a lot of thought into this, and ultimately, it was shit. It was dog shit. Complete fucking dog shit, and some of the, you know, worst zombie stuff that I've seen in a while. Not even from an effects perspective, but any of the ideas they had ultimately were just, eh, you know, thrown by the wayside. In an effort to basically remind us that there are a bunch of, you know, uh, gritty yet pretty people trying to blow shit up. Which sometimes is all you need, but at two and a half hours, if this movie had been an hour and 40 minutes, I might have been more kind to it. But nope, Zack Snyder had to get all his fucking slow-mo in and then some. So, number six, Space Jam, A New Legacy. Now, I love the original Space Jam, even though I fully recognize it has not aged all that well. It had life and energy and exuberance, and this had the potential to be the revival of a franchise. LeBron James was a big basketball star. He probably won't be playing that much longer, but he was, you know, he wanted to do he wanted to do this, and he was excited. You could tell he was having a blast doing it. <laughs> the problem is, the movie was shit. The technology was shit. Even though they put a lot of budget into this, it ultimately looked ridiculous. The plot was dumb. The whole thing with the game was dumb. Was like it didn't even seem like video game like. It didn't even see. It ultimately seemed like that. It just seemed. It seemed otherworldly, like, where it's, like, it's not of this planet. And I don't mean, like, oh, like, they're aliens. I mean, it seems like somebody was observing Earth and observing films and said, yes, we're another planet, we can make a film somehow, and we'll just do this, and it just, it didn't work. It, it was pretty goddamn bad. It was, in fact, quite shit. And I pretty much hated it. Number five, The Matrix Resurrections, most recent entry on here, and boy, boy, was this bad. You could tell that Lana Wachowski didn't want to do it, Warner Brothers was going to do it, what, you know, whether she wanted to or not, and they just did meta-commentary and basically said, yeah, we're going to tell the fans that we think they're idiots for watching this movie. And also it was bad, and the special effects were not great, and Neil Patrick Harris was about the only person who was trying. I'm not saying that Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss weren't, but their characters were ultimately not fleshed out. This was a movie that had no right to exist. So we go to number four, A Quiet Place Part 2, or as I called it, A Quiet Place DLC in my review, because that's pretty much what it was. It had a great hook in the beginning. No, not a great hook, but it had a great hook in the beginning to get people interested. And then, unfortunately, it just pretty much hooked people. Sorry, hooked, and then got people um, to watch a malaise of a movie that just wasn't interesting. It had, this was another one that had no right to exist, and I was excited for it. <laughs> it got delayed because of the pandemic. It wasn't released on any streaming services, which I thought was a bit of a mistake. I think they should have given people the option, because, oh, you can experience this in theaters. I watched it in theaters, and ultimately it just didn't, it, it, it didn't click like the first one. You're never going to recapture the magic when you have something as good as A Quiet Place, I'm not saying it's the most wholly original thing. It was I call it a quiet place for The Last of Us, but this just didn't work. This just didn't fucking work. It was not. It was. It was not. It, it was not a movie that really should have existed. And ultimately, I'm worried they're going to do a third one, and it's definitely going to be the Law of Diminishing Returns. Number three, Mortal Kombat. They had a great opening scene. They had a great fight scene between uh, Scorpion and Sub Zero and stuff like that. And they had you know a couple other scenes and then a lot of setup, 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 setup. 
And this was another one. It was a good thing it was on HBO Max because if I paid to watch this in theaters, I probably would have been really fucking pissed because it wasn't very good. When it was good, the, you know, it was fucking great, actually. There were, like, moments where I was like, okay, violence, bloody, this kind of stuff. But we're finally, like, Mortal Kombat. Even though the 1995 Mortal Kombat, while cheesy, was still kind of fun, <laughs> this this was just like, oh, we're going to do, like, four or five more of these movies. Well, you need to make the first movie at least somewhat good, because otherwise all you're going to do is hint at people that you're just going to keep shafting them until you get to the conclusion. Then you got to watch all of them together to get the full story, and by then nobody's going to care. And ultimately, by about halfway through this movie, even with, like, a fight scene at the end, I didn't care. And I didn't care if they were going to hint at a sequel. It wasn't very good. It just it just ultimately was kind of average. So we go to number two, Malignant. Talked about this on my least favorite list. Spoiler, sorry, um, if you haven't watched it yet. Malignant was very disappointing. It was James Wan. Um, not I, I, It's weird because James Wan is usually really good at horror and good at humor and just the horror and the humor and other stuff. It was just very bleak and badly filmed. It just, it was like ridiculous. They tried to, you know, do this twist that was really fucking dumb. And it didn't make a whole lot of goddamn sense ultimately. I mean, it was just like, okay, how, how did this happen? Oh, that's how it happened. Still dumb. Still really fucking dumb. The action scenes were stupid. The chase scene in the middle is what lost me. And I ultimately ended up hating this movie. And I was very disappointed because I was really looking forward to this. And number one. <laughs> here is the controversial stuff here. Halloween Kills. Evil dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. The musical. I was so fucking stoked for this. When I found out it was uh, going to be in theaters and streaming on Peacock, I'm like, terrific. I can just sit at home and watch it or whatever. I was going to go watch it with one of, one of my best friends, but I was like, yeah, you know, I'll just watch it on Peacock. And I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, you know what? All right, I'm here. I'm all excited and everything. And in a number of minutes into it, I'm like, mm. and it, that expression didn't really change. That no, that didn't really, I kept just, hmm. Really? This is what we're doing? Oh, we're going to do a whole bunch of backstory. Oh, we're going to do more backstory. Oh, let's do more backstory. Let's do more. I understand what they were trying to do, but they were trying to recreate... They, they took elements of like trying to make him almost supernatural that nobody really... That a lot of people just didn't like later in the series. And considering that the 2018 one was a direct sequel to the 78 version, even ignoring uh, the 1981, very good Halloween 2, 1980, I think it was 81, they ignored all the other sequels. Even H2O, that wasn't that bad. It's a good thing they ignored Resurrection. My point is, this movie had so much potential. I love when he got out of the house and, you know, did all the stuff where he was, you know, the violence against the firemen that were trying to save him and everything, because, geez, Michael, like, you realize these people are trying to save you, or at least trying to save the house. How dare you be against fire safety? And there were elements of this that were good as far as, like, the violence, but the flashbacks and the bullshit and just the supernatural stuff were, okay, he's a man in that other one, and he's a strong man and a crazy man, but he's ultimately a man. Oh no, he's actually supernatural and this kind of stuff, and it just, it didn't make sense. Like, the ending in particular didn't. Now we're going to go to Halloween Ends, which better be the end of it, until they eventually, you know, inevitably reboot it in about 15 to 20 fucking years, because that's what everybody goddamn wants. By that point, I don't think that Jamie Lee Curtis is going to be starring in it, but this just didn't, this, this didn't work. I was very disappointed by it. I loved Halloween 2018. I was just very disappointed by this, and that's why it's my most disappointing movie of 2021. Let me know your most disappointing movies of the year in the comments, please. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rethlin. I'll see you soon.